Hello all and welcome to episode 11 of Enterprise Tech India Unplugged and uh, today we have with us Kumaran who is the chief mentor of Tiny Magic and uh, in these testing times in this crisis when everybody is locked in we thought of that there must be some opportunities for somebody to to realize the potential of this crisis and, and make sure that they are able to do something out of of this crisis and uh, make something better out of this crisis and become better people better systems better businesses so so kumaran in your experience what are you seeing today as what are the possible opportunities which are now happening around you and and things which which you think uh, can really affect people in a better way i think there is going to be immense opportunities okay but i'll just talk probably three of them, which I've seen, seen so far. And I'm also looking at opportunities which the tech or the IT can enable for a business, the opportunities around that. Okay. The first thing which conventionally IT has been helping executing or running businesses, which is a broad thing, but they focus on typically uh, either the sales or the fulfillment aspect of it. But I think one key opportunity that they can go after is how do we help collaborate better or the suit generating. To be specific, they can develop systems by which work assignment can be made impersonal. Uh-huh. So that means that A can assign work to B without being in person. That's mm-hmm. the problem. Mm-hmm. Okay. How do I assign work to somebody without talking to them, without seeing them, without using words, and without seeing their nod of their heads? Mm-hmm. Solve that problem. Mm-hmm. Okay. It'll be a- immense help to the business because today we simply do not know to ask somebody else to do some something without talking to them so one of the key things which i have been talking to my uh, poor my mentees and others businesses i work with one simple sentence write first speak later okay okay Help your organizations write first mm-hmm. and talk later, preferably talk less. Okay. okay. For task assignment. For okay. problem solving, it's a different thing. Okay. okay. So if they can do that, okay, they will help in a lot of different ways. It improves efficiency, it improves uh, dependency on people to be around and it brings in asynchronous city which mm-hmm. gets a lot of efficiency so uh, for example it can be something like a manager did not need to wait for the employee to come at nine o'clock off to give his instruction so right. today he is telling i need to have a meeting at 9 so that we ca- i can tell you what you have to do for the day the manager has to be at 9 the employee has to come at 9 now if you enable this manager knows previous day evening or 6 o'clock in the morning he gives instruction to the employee and in in a lot of sales kind of in, uh, cases you have people coming to the office getting debriefed and then going to the customer right you enable this the person goes directly he's got whatever he needs so the concept of needing to come to offices gets eliminated this is one part okay so the second thing which i was talking about is once you have assigned work right the other is updates right Uh i would like to give update to the person who's given me something to do Yes. And as a person who's given something, I want to know what's happening there. Okay. Right. So enable them to give quick feedback, whoever is doing it, 
as seamlessly as possible and as non intrusively as possible look for opportunities where these updates can happen automatically for example let's take a sales guy he has to make four different sales calls right. okay now he need not say i finished you given me three routes to go i finished all the three don't even ask them to update it mm-hmm. right as he is traveling through map the location and then say yes he has gone there mm-hmm. and probably when he's so let's say this guy has to go from a b c points okay as soon as he crosses point b okay we know that the meeting a has finished mm-hmm. and he got finished at 2 right okay so he comes back okay and he stops at point b the application promptly says do you want to give a voice update of point a what happened there right so this guy is that so if i if let's say i am the manager and you are the sales guy you landed up uh, in you finished meeting a there's nothing which is going to stop you you just do your stuff okay and then you come to point b right as soon as you park your car right the application you know you stop moving he says deepak you finished meeting a right do you want to give any updates the yeah. application prompts you right right and then you say you know this is what i talked these are the next action point so this automatically goes and updates that per specific opportunity because that's already there in the system right right you know which customer he went to you know which point he is meeting just update that it's done all right right okay so but assuming that the first task assignment has happened cleanly right right then the third part is about reviewing so once mm-hmm. it is done then can the review process also be made easier okay okay is what is the how can you define uh, deliverables very clearly as it how can you enable them to deliver it cleanly and cl- clearly so if these three things right assigning getting updates and verification of a task completed can be done asynchronously without looking at each other's face and need to be in person i think the uh, enterprise would have done a pretty great job and i think these are the first opportunities which is existing today and okay and up it enterprise it which is going to help organizations address this problem proactively will actually have lot more momentum even if a situation like this doesn't arise it will give them lot of agility to their business right right well, I, I, and i think i've seen some of these these uh uh innovation in, in some of the applications which i've seen for uh in person calls where where sales sales people have to do their in person calls they where they want to actually verify that the 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 person has actually met somebody real right it's not like imaginary i can just go outside and just park my vehicle and just leave my phone there and go somewhere so they actually have uh it says you have to look at the camera and you have to blink for some time so that you understand this is a real person you have met right so so that, th- those are the kinds of innovations i've seen uh, being applied uh, uh, for for in person sales calls right but in in terms of uh, in terms of what is happening with this remote work this what, what are the other this is what you gave an example is of task assignment and making sure it is reviewed and automatic updates and things like that but in terms of this all of this remote working which suddenly has sort of appeared to be viable right which is which obviously existed for a very long time this is not new technology we are using right this has existed for some time but what are these opportunities which are happening because of this remote becoming viable for people to actually do and exercise uh, remote working really efficiently what do you think are the opportunities there i think uh opportunities for it is going to be reduce the number of workspaces that you want to have we once people okay. kind of learn it okay so it's a kind of i would say enterprise it needs to kind of look at their budget like for example i've seen companies which didn't enable uh, i know microsoft so i'm going to talk microsoft but i'm not pitching microsoft mm-hmm. here uh, 
uh, it's just that people didn't spend on office 365 or microsoft teams because it was expensive okay mm -hmm. today i see organizations have enabled it for within the past one week to 10 days they have enabled mm -hmm. office 365 because they wanted microsoft team for around 30 to 40 percent of the employees okay and they didn't right. enable it because of budget constraints i understand now right as an enterprise IT, start looking at it differently. If you have 50 workstations, people to sit, right? Drop that to, from 50, drop it down to 25. The 25 seat cost saving that you do, move it into teams for all. Right, right. That is an opportunity, yes. So that is another uh, opportunity to look at it. So now you have and uh, you have other benefits that's coming out of that and i remember like uh, especially in microsoft right within consulting and services we will always have the number of desk lesser than the number of employees if we had yes. 100 guys we will have only 20 seats in office you're saying guys anyway you're going to be out why do you need yeah. i mean you remember right. we used to have that in fact like uh, it used to be funny right we will go and sit in some other department space yes yes Correct, yes. because our our area will be completely filled. Yes. So I think um, that kind of arbitration is up to enterprise IT to drive it. They have to be smart to say instead of buying a desktop, we'll go for a laptop, and and instead of a physical space and physical rental, we'll actually go for an online subscription of an online collaboration tool, which kind of relates to what I talked first. Right. This has to exist for that to happen. Right. Right. So, so that's another uh, opportunity in terms of looking at, re-looking at what infrastructure for an employee means. It's right. not a physical desk, it's not a chair, it's not a desktop, but it's more like uh, a laptop or probably a internet connection which they can work with. And can you do a VPN to secure it? So that would be the infrastructure which the IT team needs to look at. Right. But I, I think there is there's a lot of opportunity for cost saving for for organizations by doing all these things, right? So the cost of a workstation, cost of uh, building infrastructure in a central location, I think is much less than just paying the employee for a broadband connection, right? And and the amount of time that that employee saves for traveling to the central location, doing all the some in, in, in big cities sometimes it can take two hours to reach a place, right? So yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 I think the productivity the overall cost. Here. The yeah. overall cost. I think I think if I remember right, I think it's around roughly the per desk cost, right? The yes. charge back that is done. That's mm -hmm. around. Uh, if I remember, it's around. 150 or 200 dollars per seat per month if i remember i mean generally different yeah. companies have different things yeah. but i think it was around something around that range right right At, that's around 7000 8000 rupees right now yes, yes. even if you give let's say 3000 rupees as internet to the yes. employee yes correct and uh, travel and and, and and if companies are going to arrange transport right big pick up yes. and top shift kind yes. of a stuff they have eliminated that also so yeah there's so in fact like, and actually enterprise it should become a key driver right so this is another to enable all this. yes so they can become more like enablers of business op efficiency than standard operations itself so in a way, it's kind of interesting. It's something like probably um, they should make the life of the COO yes. better. Yes, yes. But, but are there still some jobs which you think should be done from an office? Are there still some job or is there any job, uh, especially, of course, in IT, I believe anything can be done remotely. But of course, there'll be things like manufacturing and where physical goods are being produced they cannot be really done remotely. But in, in today's services world where I would say a large portion of people are involved in services, most services can be done remotely where physical activity is not really required. Is that, is that true or is there still some jobs which require physical presence in a central location? I, 
But if no, you look at very if you look at, if I you can look at any service today, probably I think the only thing which I would look at is like let's say you are dependent on hardware. Like let's say you are a company involved in printing 3D stuff. Yes. Okay. Yes. Designing. That is, like, that is as good as manufacturing. It's as good as man because I can if I have 10 guys I cannot give 10 3D printers to all of them. I would need to have one, right? But then right. even then in that case there are three days I can spend designing in my house. Yes. And fourth and fifth day alone I go. So basically 10 guys come on Monday, 10 guys come on Tuesday like that, right? Right. right. Still it is possible in that scenario. Right. But I think other than that I not I actually can't think of anything where you really need a physical uh, office presence once in a while maybe like once a week or once a fortnight it helps to improve communication but other than that i really don't see a need at all so do you, do you think this is an opportunity for the co-working spaces now is, is this an opportunity for co-working spaces to to enable lot more people uh, to let let corporations not have their big offices and rather than rent these co-working spaces uh, for for meetings, in fact. So, so I know. Yeah, I know there's I, a, there's I, a big... I, no, no, no. I, I think it's it's perfectly uh, fine and agreeable. And I think it's why I was smiling is that uh, as technology companies, everybody is scheming on the top of terrace, telling cloud, cloud. Co-working spaces are nothing but cloud infrastructure. <laughs> yes. Yes. In terms of space, right? It's nothing yes. but a cloud environment. Yeah. You get a desk for yourself. It's like taking one EVM that you need for a uh, half an hour and then shutting it down. Yes, exactly, exactly. So, 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 so yeah, my, my sort of my sort of point around uh, around uh, uh, this co-working spaces was not for individual co-working, right? So you do. There's no point today to go to some place in a co-working space and do your own work. You can do that at your home. Really, there is no need for you to travel to this, even if it is nearby, to go to this place because the only need would be if you have children crying in your background and you need to have a have a conference call and which you do not want to be disturbed and then you go to the co-working space, right? Again, so co-working space, I would say only for meeting other people. To do your own work, I don't see any reason for you to hire a co-working space. And, and, and I think some of the some of the recent disasters around co-working has been around that. The, the people built up these huge co-working spaces and nobody rents them at the prices which they are they are charging for it. And then some of it is like ridiculously high, uh, which you would pay. But meeting rooms, conference rooms, hiring of conference rooms, that should be their business rather than offering people a place uh, to just sit and work. Correct. I agree. Right. Yes, that's true. So what has been your experience since you also more often than not work from home and literally most of your peop uh, people in your company work from home? What has been your experience in the last uh, uh, so many years doing so? I think it's uh, it's been uh, very productive. OK, mm -hmm. and I think all of us pretty much love it. And it's in a way, it's kind of a little dangerous because it's a one-way street. Once you get used to this, you don't want to step into a physical office and you can't think of a world where you have to go to office and then uh, work. And I think that's happened to, it's like a religious conversion of people who start with my company, they work in a conventional thing and after yeah. an year or two, they kind of say, I really don't know how I, if I had to quit here and join a normal company, how am I going to manage and do that? Because you get so much efficiency inside it, right? Travel time is saved. You get to plan better because your physical interaction is less, right? So your communication becomes better. Mm -hmm. And a lot of interesting things happen because of that. You have better clarity of what you want to do and okay. what you have to do. And because of that, the quality of work also improves. Your learning improves. When there's an abundance of communication channel, then we have poor quality communication. But when there's a constraint on the communication bandwidth, right? It's something like we have limited bandwidth. We'll be conscious about what we want to reach. Right. We right. won't let one uh, 1080 image song play in the background. <laughs> yes, yes. So similarly, when there's a constraint of people's time and attention, then we get more precise in what we are calculating. I think that and that's a key benefit, right? And 
the dire indirect thing is the quality of our work also goes up so it sounds a little counterproductive or counterintuitive that reduce the interaction time and the quality of work will go up right right so i, I mean I, personally i've been you know, out of the out of the 20, 25 plus years i've been working 20 years plus i have actually worked from home even though i have worked for big corporations i have literally worked from home and means when i have to go out i just go out and do it but literally i i don't travel if i don't have to travel right so i if i have to work with somebody i i'm never going to my office anytime i never had a desk right so so i i although i worked for large corporations i i was fortunate enough to have such roles where i could do this thing but in your in your in your habit forming did you feel that you are working more when you started working from home versus when you started working from office means is is it has your work life balance although you said you are working from home but mm. has your work life balance shifted more towards work rather than towards life no i no? not in my experience no okay okay in fact i get more to do life things because okay. i've saved a lot of time in travel and especially travel travel is like 3 3 and a half hours yes yes okay and that i get back to do whatever i want in those 3 3 and a half hours and i'm not talking about mental and physical fatigue right right okay so i have more energy mentally physically and i have more time what do i do with it i spend it on life yes so so in 12 hour awakening period 3 hours is around 35% i have got 35% more time to do stuff for my own life so the it hasn't in, increased and in fact both has gone up the amount of time i quality time i spent for work has gone up the coin of quality time i spent for life both has both has actually increased by switching to this mode okay. all right so thank you kumaran i think there are a lot of opportunities and a lot of people are still figuring it out uh under this lockdown what are the opportunities and 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 just sitting at home will actually maybe drive uh, uh things in your mind which the things which you can the sometimes the creativity comes out of constraints right so we have this uh, uh big creativity push which might be happening at the at the end of this lockdown where people will start coming up with these new ideas just because they are sitting at home right and and we hope to see a lot of this in in future with new ideas and new ways of collaborating and new ways of working so thank you kumaran and see you next time sure thanks <laughs>